So this is, this is, the, this is the case from the patient who I mentioned. Um, the young patients had an anterior subcapsular cataract, and so that, that's from all the manipulations, likely from placing the iris as well as removing the iris. And you can see that atrophic pupil. Well, he is not actually dilated for this surgery. That's just where his pupil sits. Oh, boy. Uh, the cataract in these cases is quite easy, but now things change a little bit, and we're putting tripan blue or vision blue in the eye now. The cataract's already gone, and that's because in a few minutes we're going to place our artificial iris. We want to make sure that we can see the capsule as the iris is implanted. And my plan for this case is to put the artificial iris in the capsular bag. A capsular tension ring is really a, a requirement for all these cases, and that, that ring is to make sure that capsule's on stretch and try to prevent phimosis down the road uh, should that, that capsule wrinkle, it's going to wrinkle up our prosthesis. But we actually don't see a lot of phimosis because the silicone prosthesis prevents the anterior and posterior leaflets from fusing. He was able to choose the iris color of his choice because the patients opted for uh, bilateral surgeries. He finally got his dream. He finally got his dream, that's right. <laughs> so he actually chose a, an athlete that he admired and found a picture uh, close enough to, to show the iris color and texture and chose that for both of his eyes. So that's our silicone iris prosthesis. Tree fine down to about 9.5 millimeters and you can see in the video we're using a little intraocular ruler to measure the size of the capsular bag. Now the iris prosthesis will go in. Uh, it does not like to go into the capsular bag. And there are some people who say these actually work better when you put them in the sulcus. But I do think that in the, in the bag fixation is very nice. The eyes are very quiet and it holds the iris prosthesis uh, in place quite well. But it does take a little tugging and pushing and pulling like you can see on your video. Now at the end of the case, and we learned this, or I learned this during the FDA study, this patient is done after FDA approval, that if you leave some large iris rem remnants, it'll actually cast a shadow on the iris prosthesis. So in this case, we're going to use the vitrector and just trim back his natural iris uh, so that the prosthesis color shines through.